Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How are you guys doing tonight? Uh, tonight, I will have a guest with me, my friend uh, Jennifer Gustin, and we will be talking about the Child Protective Services, better known as CPS, also known as DIFUS, which is the Department of Youth and Family Services. So, join us as we dive into this. So, let me first grab her. <laughs> Hello, how are you guys doing? I am just uh, getting Jennifer to join us, so bear with me. Child trafficking does. It, it, it's a very reviling thing, and I'm, I'm surprised that it's taken till this long to really deal with it. Um, hey, Char, how are you doing? Um, I don't think I'm over exaggerating when I say that uh, it's probably a conduit to trafficking, CPS, DIFUS, whatever you want to call it. Um, in this, the fact that you have all these children right there in that pool, right there, in um, foster care and in other protective services that they use. But, well, let me give a little context on my personal experience with this because I dealt with it at one point. Um, they came to my uh, home here. I'm actually able to invite you. Give me a second. Can I actually invite you? I can't invite you somehow. Hmm. Hmm. Hey. I'm trying to get you into here. Hmm. I, I see you're with us, Jen Jennifer. Um, I can't add you. I'm not sure if you're on a different, oops, a different platform. I'm using my phone at the moment, so I'm not sure if it can do it through a computer or not, or is it just not letting you join? I don't know. But, uh, so. Oh, really? Laws in Texas. Interesting. Wow. Jeez. Oh, okay, cool. Um, yeah, one thing that I, I find when it comes to trafficking, the one thing that really kind of concerns me is, especially here in my home state of New Jersey, is the fact that it is a sanctuary state and we have all these legal protections for um, undocumented uh, in, uh, undocumented individuals and um, how there's all these protections. Okay, give me a second. I think I got her. We Oh, it's it's currently in the adding phase, so hopefully this works. There we go. I think it works. All right. Hi, how are you? I'm Dandy, thank you. How about yourself? Uh, keeping it together. Fair enough. So. There's there's a lot going on. Uh, there always seems to be a lot going on. Yeah, yeah, that is true. It's not one thing, it's another. That's very true. Mm. So, 
that's a lovely topic to talk about trafficking and TPS and all these other wonderful things. Oh yeah. yeah. Just, and, and how in depth it is and where it goes. It's, it's fun. Oh, definitely. It's definitely, it's definitely uh, leisurely things you can talk about during the, on the table. And it's great too, because my therapist tells me that I need to smile more. So I have to figure out a way to talk about this and smile and like, I, I don't even know how to. Uh, I'll, pro I'll probably put some white cracks in there here and there. Yeah, that, that would be nice. <laughs> break, break the, uh, the tension a little bit. I think that's really what it is. I mean, this, it, it's such a serious topic that really when you really want to kind of dig into it and actually understand a lot of things that are going in there, it kind of good to kind of ease the tensions into this. It, it, it's, uh, this isn't something that you can just drop on people because it's way too much to accept at once. Exactly. It's kind of like, um, kind of like motor oil to engines. You know, you just can't have your pistons running without the oil because it allows you to lubricate so it runs a little bit better. That way, yeah, smoother processing. Yeah. It, 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 no, I, that's not the best analogy, but it was the most. Uh, hey, it's the first the thing that popped thing. into your head. Yeah. Yeah, uh, everything, else had to, everything else had to do with some other form of lubrication, <laughs> whatever you want to say. But I thought motor oil would probably be the most uh, friend, family friendly. And, you know, overall, the universe is its own well-oiled machine. So, I mean, that, that it, does work. It does work. It does. And um, I, I, funny enough, I was actually I actually looked up uh, the case on the docket the other day. Oh, really? Yeah. It, uh, and I, I'm just kind of reading through it and all the different uh, accounts within it. Sorry. <laughs> such, a, such a friendly kitty. Yep. Hi, Bobby. How are you doing, buddy? <laughs> this one's uh, an anixia. But anyway, sorry, go on. So I was just kind of reading over kind of like the abstract of everything that's kind of going on within that one case. And sheesh. If you real, if you wanted some heavy reading, definitely don't do this on a um, thinking you're just gonna be able to just read through it and just say, okay, it's fine, it's wonderful. No, this was like some heavy duty, just really nitty gritty stuff. And the thing is, is the the case itself. Hi, Ani. The case itself, this part, the main part, is sealed. So you guys don't even have you guys don't even have the evidence and all that kind of stuff. You don't have the blood work, the laboratory results, you know, all that kind of stuff either. So, I mean, it's, it's a whole, a whole mess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and the worst part about it, it really is that it, 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 it's, um, it kind of has that weird, slippery slope analogy and like I, i've been noticing this a lot lately where it can't be that bad seriously it, it really you're, you're exaggerating it can't be that bad and then it's like i can't and you start reading it which once you finally go down that rabbit hole like we with a lot of other things it's like i can't believe it you know well i mean i'm i'm definitely guilty of the whole if cps is involved then you know you did something wrong type of thing you know, I'm definitely guilty of having that mindset. I'm definitely guilty of thinking that and, and very likely probably saying at one point or another. And, you know, I am very guilty of being wrong. Um, clearly, CPS does get involved with no need to completely unnecessarily. Um, and they traffic our children. I have seen what they do. I am a child who's trafficked through CPS. Um, they took my daughter to keep me from coming forward. Right now their demands are um, keep going to therapy and stop talking. Literally are their demands at this point. Keep going to therapy and stop talking. Like a, like a gag order? Yeah. They're gagging but you? They, they, they're pretty much saying, yeah, there's a gag order on me. I can't. The circuit court put a gag order on me. The circuit court oh. put a gag order on me telling me that I'm not allowed to post um, about the case online. I, I, 
But even then, they started pushing the vaccinations and making it worse. And it's, it, I even realized at one point that my attorney at the time didn't, didn't file the, this entire packet of information to circuit court. So really? I had this whole thing. I had submitted this on um, October 25th um, when I had court on October 25th. Recently, I fired my attorney and I got a copy of the uh, docket report. The docket report shows that CPS submitted um, their evidence to get the gag order put on me on October 25th. And I submitted my evidence. Well, the evidence that I submitted was stricken from the record. Whereas the evidence that CPS submitted was accepted. Did they give a, did they give a reason? Uh, did they get the basis of that? that they won't decision? tell me even the ju They won't even tell me the name of the judge who made that decision. Yeah. Okay. All justice is blind in the eyes of the court. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There, there, there seems to be some. Um, There's audience. a problem here. There's a there big a problem here. Because I've been trying to submit this information for months. I've gone through two attorneys to try and submit this information. Neither, neither of them was, were willing to. I had to fire my attorney. I had to go to federal court. I had to sue circuit court and federal court for them to finally listen and start paying attention. And now the head of circuit court of Baltimore County is named on this lawsuit for being complicit in child trafficking because this is all happening under her roof. It's her responsibility to deal with this. It, it, and in kind of an, a related but unrelated note, this is, almost reminds me of a lot of the things that Hugh's been mentioning, especially in the earlier post when he started talking about trafficking. And uh, uh, what was it called? Uh, one photo I remember, and I, I actually have this with my photo roll, is have you ever seen that photo where you had the little girl in the foreground and it's like a dark room? And, and they were like, together we, on the other cameras. Hit, yeah. And it goes into, um, this one says, we haven't even hit the child trafficking posts. Mm -hmm. And it's like, what, how far is this going? I mean, it, at this point, when you really start digging into this, it's bad. I mean, we thought things uh, do, were bad. Do you, uh, this... it, it, no, it's bad. It's really yeah. bad. How far it goes is people don't realize how far it goes. I have seen how far it goes. Like, when, when that starts coming out, people are going to sit here and be like, what the fuck? How has this been going on for this long? I, it, like, it's and, that and, bad. And, and then you have to play. <laughs> no problem. Um, and, and then it's funny that I'm, I, I'm, you also have places like Little James Island over in the Caribbean where the trafficking is happening through there. You have places like Hollywood and New York and D.C. and who knows where else, because apparently um, they're like anthills at this point. They just just, can't, just kind of pop up out of nowhere. You try to yeah. snuff it out and it gets 10 times bigger. Well, I don't, I don't necessarily think it's that. The biggest issue at this point that we're dealing with is that the vast majority of these people are blackmailed in some form or another. Yes, 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 you, yes. You know, and, and a lot of them are blackmailed, you know, to a degree that, you know, they are forced to rape these children who have been trafficked through CPS. Mm -hmm. So the mm -hmm. degree of how complicit everybody is and how intertwined it is really puts them in a situation of, well, if you don't do this, everybody's going to find out what you've been doing. So everybody's sitting here, want, not everybody, I don't want to say everybody, but the vast majority of people want the truth to come out. They want everybody to know, but you know, they don't want, they don't want, you know, what they've done to come out in a way that it's going to just throw them under, under the bus rather than the people who actually are doing this. Mm -hmm. and, it, and I don't know how severe these things that they'd be blackmailed to do would be. I mean, I, I it must have been pretty damning for that to happen. I mean, but... See, I'm kind of speechless at this moment when you really... when you, you, you I, I'm having a hard time having some forms of sympathies at this point come, when it comes to this because it's for the children at this point. We, we, we want to have these children to grow up 
and be able to understand how wonderful this world is without having to deal with the cruel parts of it yet. But, but unfortunately, they're going to have to know about this because if they don't know about this, then it's going to repeat again in the future. That is true. They need, they need, they need some type of uh, at least general uh, buildup of this. Yeah. But at least, in, at least in a safe location for them to actually understand yes. this, you know, in a, in a way that they can actually understand it uh, without them having to actually go into the lion's den and actually have to experience it. Right. Uh, and, and, you know, you know, I, I think to a degree there's going to ha- there should be some sort of um, Auschwitz type of situation where people are able to tour these facilities where these children were held to be able to see where, where this happened and to see what went on. And, you know, I think there needs to be some sort of degree where, where I don't want to say museums because that's a little, uh, I don't know, inappropriate, but there should be something where, you know, we need to make it so that way people have, where people see these places and, and it's brought to reality, it's brought to light because, you know, if we destroy all of this, then, you know, we're destroying the history and we can't destroy the history because if we do, it's going to happen again. Yeah, it, it, it's 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 not good. It's not comfortable, but we can't. You know, we have to. We don't have we a can, choice. Can't, this is not something you need to need to tiptoe around. You need to actually. You need some form of direct message, unfortunately, and that's going to rattle people's belief systems and ideas and I- ideologies and who knows what else. Their core values. And, yeah, um, Every, everything they everything they thought they knew is 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 a lie. Hence the Great Awakening. Yep. You know, it no one said this. It's, I I I, can, I think it's more of growing pains than it actually is. Just terrible. It's we're actually coming to realization that these things are there, and the blinders are finally off. Well, I mean, you've you, I, you've probably seen that meme where there's that um. The two pictures, double pictures, where it says, you know, what I think waking up is going to be like. And there's this girl sitting on a mountain and it's all zen and she's meditating. And underneath, you know, there's a picture of a girl who's like hugging her pillow, having a panic, saying, I'm not crazy. I'm not crazy. I'm not crazy. And that's what it's really like. <laughs> yeah. So. It's a, um, the one that, that kind of reminds uh, that, and. I'm going to refer to Q a lot when, when, I, when I'm doing this. So uh, the one the thing that kind of pops into my head is that uh, people who know about this cannot sleep until this is, until this is solved, basically. And uh, there have been many times that I've been not able to sleep very well because this is always on my mind. It's like, how am I able to live my life actually relatively safely well, there are kids out there who cannot say that and will never be able to say that. And, and it scares me because how many families, how many parents are not having children because they see situations like this happening and they're terrified. They're terrified. I mean, this is, I'm going to say it, this is terrorism. It this is. is. This is terrorism. This is our government intentionally saying either you behave or we're taking your children. Mm-hmm. It's terrorism. It's um, almost authoritarian if you think about it. Yeah, you know on a whole different level because there's no even there's no guidelines. It's just a complete free for all mafia where even then there's no accountability. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it, in in most mafias there are at least some degree of honor and code and accountability. You don't go after the women and children, but here you specifically go after the women and children. That's what you go for. That's your goal. I mean. It's- I mean there's a saying of there is still honor among honor among thieves, and uh, yeah, you know we're literally talking about at this point savagery. You know because even the most basic individual understands that there are limits you go to. You know there are there there are certain there are at least three things you don't go after: children, women, and the family. Yeah. Everything else is free or, or, or the over. home, the home in general, because the home in general cover, exactly. covers all of that. Once you once you go into those things, all bets are off, and that person is going to defend those things till their dying breath. Which 
It's exactly what I, which I'm assuming that's exactly what you're doing at this point, which I, I can understand. I, I can't stop. I won't stop. I'm not capable of stopping. So, um, you know, they're going to have to Nancy Schaefer me because I'm not going to stop. Well, it's not well, happening. I, 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 I don't want you to stop because I, I, I have full faith in what you're doing. I mean, thank you. You've actually, I, I can honestly say that when you've been actually kind of spreading this information out, and I've been reading this stuff, it's opened my eyes to a whole new world of things that I didn't even know existed. And that idea of, dear God, this is actually happening. Yeah. And I'm. And I'm sorry. I am very sorry for you and everything that's going on. It's it's stopping. That's that's the most important thing is that it's putting a spotlight on all of this and it's stopping and that's what, what I need to tell myself. I I that's all I really can tell myself is that this is putting a spotlight on things, it's making it, you know, known to people, they're seeing it happening. That's that's the most important thing. I'm going to be up front, and right now, I wish I, I was over there, and I would give you a hug at this moment, because just for support. I wish I could, but, you know, I'm a few hundred miles away. So stay I, away. I, stay away. You'll be safer there. <laughs> that, that, that's like saying uh, <laughs> it's rocking a hard place right here. I know. I know. No matter what. <laughs> It's oh, you always have some form of a uh, occupational hazard or living hazard. You know? Yeah. <laughs> but you know, it, we just we you know you and I we just weigh it and you know we find that that it's worth it. So. You know, it's, um, I had a uh, one of my ILA teachers I had back in what was it sixth grade. Uh, she actually had lupus, and she there were times really? where she would not be in school because she'd be so sick with her illness. Right. And one time before she was away for about a month because she had to go to the hospital and get tests done and everything, she said to us, I didn't, ha I didn't want this, but you have to play the cards you're dealt. Yeah. And um, sometimes you, and there's some times where you get a really crappy hand. But, but you got to play the cards you're dealt. But... <laughs> There's, I always added a second part to that, which is that just makes you a really good poker player. <laughs> yeah, uh, it, the whole idea is to bluff your way through and win with that bad hand. You know, the thing is, is I suck at card games anyway. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm the type of person that'll just say, I don't like this hand. <laughs> 52 pick up. <laughs> <laughs> 52 pick up. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Just, just all over the place. Diamond, <laughs> calm down. The fur baby's a little restless. I don't normally talk um, in general, so whenever I talk, Diamond gets really excited. He's like, "Are you talking to me?" Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! You're being social or something? I don't know. Pretty, pretty much. Yeah, you're talking to people. What? <laughs> I'm not very social outside of uh, work myself, so yeah. it's it, it, it's one of it's one of the drawbacks of uh, of being someone uh, who is so I wouldn't want to say red pill, but that, uh, let's just use red pill, okay? That's just, it's, it's, that's the most universal term. But I I, uh, I I I use the term truther, somebody who knows and shares the truth. Truther, I like that. Truther. Hold on. Oh, Diamond, go lay down. Go lay down. You're being rude. You know you're being rude. Don't kiss my ass. <laughs> go. Stop kissing my ass. Lay down. There you are. Smiling. Yep. Uh, there, you know, it helps. So, And she knows, too. She knows. Anyway. Sorry. No, no problem. I was going to say we have a pretty, act pretty active conversation in the chat right now. Oh, good. Sure. I'm, I'm not paying it. I don't have chat open at the moment, to be honest. Right. Well, it's just basically just a lot of support and 
the talk, a lot of people seem to be agreeing on the severity of everything that's kind of going on. We got a very, we got a very smart and intelligent crowd. Good, I'm, I'm glad to hear it. It seems like that that crowd is expanding. It is, and it, it's it's exponentially expanding. Good. You know, we, that's what we need. Yeah, I, I think like three years ago, like a little over three years ago. I don't think you would have had this much of a intelligent conversation about all these things. Not, no, not publicly, not like this. No way. No way. It's a relatively new thing. And it's, well, I think it's very well welcomed because if we can start talking about these hard topics, imagine how easy it's going to actually deal with the much lighter topics. Well, you know, my, my biggest frustration about all of this is right now, um, politically, we address politi- or we address human trafficking with euphemisms. We use it, you know, right now, um, the Republicans are using it in terms of the wall or, um, you know, trafficking from the border, um, drug trafficking and all that kind of stuff. Right now, the Democrats have taken up the euphemism, or at least it looks like they've taken up the euphemism of um, the, opioid, the opioid crisis. So at the end of the day, it's all, it all comes back around to the same system of trafficking, Trafficking drugs, trafficking people, trafficking, you know, children, trafficking organs. And, 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 and that's a whole different animal I'm not going into right now. That's, oh, but, um, you start, you start digging into Paolo and gone. Yeah. yeah I'm going. I, I, that's, 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 a very, that's, a, that's a totally different day. Yeah. That, that I'm not, that, I'm not up for that one today. No, 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 no. But, but um, euphemisms. Yeah. But, um, you know, it, it's frustrating because they, they, they really remove a lot of the seriousness of these subjects by talking about it in euphemisms. You know, it, it really lessens the blow of the fact that, you know, because a lot of people will think that, you know, it's quote unquote, just people fleeing their countries. Of course. It, it, it doesn't take into account the entire fact that, you know, almost all of these people, even on the way up from the border are getting raped, which has its own similarity of similarities of what's going on in CPS. Almost all, the, all of the females and a lot of the males in, in CPS are getting raped in there as well. There are a lot of things that are, that are you know, coinciding and that, that go together. And it's frustrating from my perspective to see them talking about this from such a, a you know, vague yet specific term that doesn't cover really the severity of these issues. Rather than calling it, you know, the, the southern border issue, we need to call it in, in the entire issue of human trafficking and drive the point home that this isn't just about the border. This is about human trafficking that is happening within the country that is spreading across the entire country, the entire planet. And it's even, it, it's beyond what most people can even comprehend right now. I mean, it, it, if, if oh. we... I would even go galactic, but you know that's a totally different topic altogether. Uh, I, I can uh, go there if you want to go uh, there. I can go there. Uh, in a minute, I, I, okay. I, think, I think we need to. I'm, I'm ready funny. to go there. We, we, I'm, we, I'm going to go into. I'm going to. I'm going to put my two bits into euphemism, and then we can go from there if you want to. Okay. Um, <laughs> but one thing I remember really when I used to, when, uh, first of all, context, and I know I've, I've pretty much posted this a million times. I grew up in a, a very liberal uh, family, liberal, independent family. It was independent, but vote Democrat. Very, and I and I dealt with a lot. I was a leftist all the way through college. Well, you're you're in the Jersey area. I was in the New York area, so we had very similar, very similar. Yeah. It sounds and like so, anyway. And so, basically, becoming being more conservative, uh, being a libertarian conservative on a lot of things, is almost like basically committing suicide in many ways uh, because everyone thinks like you say nationalist right everyone immediately goes to white nationalist and I'm like right. no National, nationalist just means an intense pride for one's country they immediately right. go to the extremes right you know it's either it's either you go to an extreme or you deflect right or or you just straw man the argument Well, and the thing is, is they don't want to, they, they, they want to pick and choose what little aspects they're going to take and twist words. They like to change the English language to suit their means. I mean, we saw, who is it, um, Marcon um, did it in France by trying to change the meaning of patriotism. Oh, oh, yeah, because patriotism is 
is akin to treason or something like that. Well, whatever it was that he said, he said, you know, that patriotism um, and nationalism is tr- something about it being treasonous. And they try to completely redefine words to be able to shift the narrative to, ju- to justify whatever insanity they're trying to push on us at any given moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, uh... And going into the whole idea of uh, rape and all those other fun things, uh, wonderful, uh, wonderful things that get your heart fluttering. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, is the one thing that really comes to mind is the Me Too movement and yeah. how that really lessens the blow. It's one of those other things where they use euphemism for that, and how you know all of a sudden we're not we we only deal with the people who actually cry out. You know, oh, I was raped or I was sexually abused. I, I can understand there are people out there who actually do that, but there are I would say infinitely more people who don't talk about it because of the authorization they would have and all the other mental and psychological um, issues that you get because of that. Well, the question is, do you have those mental and psychological issues because you've talked about it or do you have those mental and psychological issues because you've kept it bottled up and not talked about it? I would argue both. I mean, I can imagine it depends on the person. Well, you have... You have the first part where, you know, you bottle it up and you're like, you just kind of play it through your head the entire time. But then when you talk about it, now people know how vulnerable you are. Yeah. That's a good point, too. Yeah. You know, That's oh, this happened too. to me. And then when, else, when someone else is dealing with it, it's like, gosh, this could happen to me or this has happened to me. Maybe, oh. maybe you're talking to someone who actually had the same issue. And they're like, wow, this person talked about it. And I'm, wow, I'm now, I understand it. And, uh, I mean, I, I've had my own experience at one point, so I... I'm sorry to hear that. Eh, life goes on. I, 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 we, I, we live, we learn, and we grow stronger from it. I've got, at that point, when I, when I talk about what happened to me, at this point, I've hit acceptance, and I'm like, it happened, we're moving on, it's not really worth weighing down. Well, what was the? Oh my gosh! One of my favorite uh, YouTubers, uh, Dustin Emos. Uh, he was. Uh, oh, I actually did a video with him a while back. Oh really? I like yeah. I like him quite a bit. Uh, we. I remember. I forgot if I was actually talking to him about this or with one of the videos I used to watch because I watch him pretty regularly. Uh, he was saying how when it comes to arguments and especially when you deal with the left wing of that type of ideology. They were ridiculed. Uh, first, you are, I think, it was ridiculed. Uh, what was it? First, they fight you, then they ridicule you, and then you accept it as uh, self-evident. Yeah. And that, that was kind of a. I'm not sure which one it was. Uh, I think we actually talked about it, but um, really, I think at this point we're actually at the part of where we we'll ridicule you. We, we've done. We've we don't been at that for a while. Yeah. You know, some parts take fat, take longer than others. And I think this is such a humongous, heavy horse pill, if you will, that it's not going to go down. It's not going to go down easily. Not easy. It's mm-hmm. going to be like molasses in January. It, it just... But once we hit that point, that, okay, we can now move on from there, the light bulb turns on, and we can progress. I don't know. I, 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 I'm, I'm feeling a lot more optimistic about a lot of things. And I'm trying to put as much optimism into this. Yeah, um, I, I mean, that's all we can do. We can't, let, we can't let the negativity bring us down. All we can do is try and focus on the optimism and on the positivity and all that. Love. It, it heals better yes. than <laughs> Love, light, caring, compassion. Uh-huh. You know... We need to we need to focus on ourselves and, and, and to a degree in focusing on ourselves we focus on each other. Yeah. And then I mean I mean we have the border where that's an issue. Uh you have CPS and uh other uh, intra uh, international of uh, not international but national issues with the same thing. And then you have places like the church, which are also dealing with their own just, it's it's everywhere. It's it's, ev- it's literally everywhere. Everywhere 
I've noticed everywhere that is claimed to be safe, it's not. Yeah. And that's the thing is, is nowhere, nowhere is safe. Like I, I, I've seen articles about how, oh man, I've seen articles about part of the way that they'll dispose of bodies is by grinding up the bones and putting them into concrete. Like that's, that's what these people do. Uh, You know, what's funny is that that is a very, very old way of doing things. It's, Actually, I I, I remember reading one thing throughout a history textbook, which that's what they did with the Great Wall in China. Yeah, they would uh, they would they would have such a horrible turnover rate when turnover rate. I mean, people dying on the wall on the wall that people would literally be buried within the wall. That they would just drop dead and they would just build the wall around them. Put the concrete on and just move ahead. Yeah, which is horrible. Talking about not respecting the dead. Well, I mean, there were, and this is a completely different extreme, but there are also cultures, um, you know, that when they conquered uh, other civilizations, that they would um, build a wall and literally build a wall around the people so that way the people would be partially outside of the wall and still alive and able to move and talk and interact, but would be built into the wall and not able to. Mm-hmm. Which is funny because that tends to be the, ar- that tends to be the argument of, on that, on the left, on the more lefter side, where it's just like you're trying to keep everybody in. You're saying Berlin Wall. Yeah. I, I'm like, no, it's like having a fence in your house, in, in, around your house. I mean, I can certainly, I can certainly understand both perspectives. I can too. I, I definitely see it, but you know, right now, especially, we need to stop the human trafficking first and foremost before we do anything. Exactly. Like, we we need to. Like it, that is the Scott used the perfect analogy of it's like trying to plug a leak when you have the faucet going a full force. Mm-hmm. Yeah, basically, you need to clog the faucet first before you clog the hole. Right. We need we need we need to stem as many of the access that they have in one way or another. I mean, heck, I would not be surprised. That's why I think it was Atlanta. Uh, airport closed down a while back. Yeah. Was that, yeah. Was that, was that last year or 17? Because they, they closed oh, that, that was home. last year because I believe it was happening while Q was posting. Well, Q's been posting since uh, uh, November of 17. Right. So it was within, it was within the past year. Give so or take. anyway, I'm wondering if that was one of the reasons why they were, when they had to, they basically went, they went dark on the entire uh, airport. Yeah. Would it be interesting if that's what was happening? Where they were actually dealing with these trafficking issues? You know, I, I would like to believe that's happening. We're seeing, you know, record breaking human trafficking arrests. We're seeing, you know, there, there's, there's really so much movement, so much happening. We're seeing so many cases of CPS corruption being exposed. We're seeing judges outright scolding social workers saying, you know, look, you can't be doing this. We've got Trump right now who is able to appoint these judges into office, these judges who are anti-human trafficking, pro-constitution, pro you need a warrant to take a child, you need a warrant to enter a house, you need a warrant to do something. You know, I I do think something is being done, but for me personally, from the depths of hell that I've seen, I've not seen enough for me to be satisfied to know that that, to to know with certainty that something's being done. Yeah, I, I, I understand that. And um, it, 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 with something so prevalent as it is, it's going to take, unfortunately, it's going to take some time. It's going to take quite some time. And let's just say the judicial system exactly isn't the fastest thing in the world, especially when you have a good judge who actually understands these issues and is compassionate. That legal system... And wants to make sure it's done... And wants to make sure that it's done the right way, so that way it can't be overturned and or and, or, or, or dismissed by technicality or you know or, or loopholed or, or it, it's just what slow and steady wins the race, I guess. Um, yeah, and and quick and stupid gets children kidnapped. Yes, exactly. <sighs> Sorry if I have a lot of um, comments tonight. I'm in a mood, in case you couldn't tell. 
I'm welcoming it. I, I totally welcome it. <laughs> Thanks. I, I appreciate it. If, if you needed an outlet, it. here you go. This is an outlet. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, you have you have people here who are willing to support you. Thanks. And, that's, hey. and that uh, I think that is a welcome thing. Um, I'm scared out of my wits. <laughs> I am scared out of my skull. Well, you know what? I don't think that you would be given this this task if you weren't able to handle it. Yeah, and I know. It, 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 at this point, I think you have iron will. It, it's, I would actually, no, I would say even as strong as Uru. <laughs> You're familiar with Uru, right? No. <laughs> okay. Uru is the metal that is created from uh, Thor's hammer. Okay. It's the hammer of the gods. <laughs> this thing is stronger than any metal on earth. Thank it, is you. The, it has that, you have that, you have that, what's the word? Chutzpah, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> Scott and I joke around, Scott and I joke around, it's a uh, cojones. <laughs> 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 That's actually kind of funny you meant to, you were mentioning that because I got into a conversation the other day about um, different um, – we were talking – my friend and I were talking about SJW things and how, you know, they play all these uh, – uh, the Olympics, if you will, the effective Olympics. <laughs> and the one we really enjoy talking about – and. I know there are a lot of people out there who may be leaning toward these things, but you know what? I'm just going to talk about how ridiculous this is. The cultural appropriation talk. Oh, that God. Is the most, that is the most amusing things to talk about in my mind because it's, oh my gosh, how dare you use this thing? It just happens that I am not using it, but it is related to me, even though it might be unrelated to me personally. Oh, you should have seen me on Halloween. On Halloween, oh, I was... I, Scott and I were having so much fun. I was running around um, the Halloween store at the uh, Stranger Things section. And I'm saying, like, this is cultural appropriation. This is so rude. This is not true to what actually happens to MK Ultra survivors. How could you? Of course, I'm joking around and having fun with it. But, you know, it's, it, that's, that's what it can be turned into. Uh -huh. You know? I mean, uh -oh. that, that's really how ludicrous it can become. I I, I, yeah, I MK Ultra. That's another interesting <laughs> topic. Like, I just started digging into that one. That that was a fun to real because you don't. I, I I don't think people realize that that name's changed since since then. There's, there, as there's, as in what like okay. The actual name of the uh, the different operations that they do with it. Oh, I know. Most people don't realize that these operations pretty much they just get transitioned to a new name. That's all. This is the it, same it, thing. It, like the original name was MK Ultra, nineteen fifties and sixties, and then it turned into the eighties and nineties. It became Operation Orion, and then oh. at and which guess who was the chairman of that committee? Who? Our good friend, Uncle Biden. He was the chairman really? that authorized the, the continuation of the operation. Ah! I have that document. I, I can, I'll, I'll send it to you. Very yes, amazing. please. Please. Yeah, it, I want to see that. It's the, it's the uh, whole committee's, uh, what's it called? Record. It's, the re it's that record of that committee meeting. Oh, wow. And then... Okay, um, yeah. The most recent one, this is the one now since it's been completed and finalized, this is the, this is the, they have finally mastered this operation. They have actually, now it's called Monarch. Yeah. Monarch Mind Control. So there'll be times I'll be walking by, I'm like, that's Monarch. They're like, <laughs> and, um, heck, I, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if that's, that, that, that's where the NPC culture comes into play a little bit. You know, that, that's what I was thinking, too. I was thinking that I think a lot of the NPC culture at this point, because you're noticing that they're in city areas, majority Democrat areas. I'm also noticing that there seems to be a very big adoption culture among them where they, they you know, will adopt children and then try and get them to fit this particular gender role that they push on the child. Or, oh, or, no, no, no. 
that one I'm, kid, I'm, that one kid in drag scares me. Yeah, that 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 that, 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 that concerns me with all. There, it, it's just really bothersome. It's but, but uh, anyways, you're saying it's just. They, they, but I, you know, I, I'm really genuinely starting to think that the most severe programming is on the extreme left. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't have any documentation to back it up. I don't have any evidence to back it. You do. I was, I was, I was one of those people. I, 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 it's really funny because around the time when I started dealing with my own awakening, if you will, um, I explained it as, are you familiar with Star Trek? Barely, not okay. barely. Okay, so I explained explain that this is kind of like being part of the Borg. Okay. All right. So are you familiar with the Borg? Okay, so the Borg and Star Trek are this ultra advanced civil, uh, ultra advanced civilization that is basically a hive mind. They're, they're gotcha. technically hive mind. They assimilate all cultures to make them part of them forcefully. So, it, it, it's it, really, it's really disturbing, because yeah. they they are being fed commands through mainstream media, that's, and that's it. And that, that, basically, that's it. And uh, um, the reason I was talking about Borg in this case is because in the in, in that you know canon that that storyline, if you're disconnected, you are disowned, and you have you are on your own. And mm -hmm. that's what happens when you when you're awakened and you don't and you're like that stuff is horrible. How dare you do that? You are disowned. You are. You are anything, pariah. Anything you are ostracized. You, they will try to destroy you. Yeah. And, and, and <sighs> if I'm not crazy now, I, I bet I will be later. Oh no, we are all fucking crazy. We are think... all nuts. But we see it. We know it, and we're trying to fix it. And I think that is why we're crazy, is because we see what we're up against, we see how convoluted it is, and we're saying, fuck you. We see it, and we're going to do everything we can to stop it. Are you familiar with the movie Eyes Wide Shut? I know of it, but I don't, okay. I don't know if I've seen okay. it. I don't okay. think I have. Um, I'm just going to be going, I'm just feathering through analogies at this point, because I, that's the best way I kind of talk I speak in hieroglyphics. But don't okay. worry, I will give you a Rosetta Stone so you'll be able to translate. <laughs> okay, so in the movie I I Ice White Shy, which is done by Stanley Kubrick, um, it talks about the secret society, you know, and the un the upper echelon of these just clubs, not gray balls and clubs that, you know, have very questionable means and their demeanors and stuff like that. Like, like the trafficking, like the trafficking that they may be, uh, like the blackmail doing. parties and stuff like that. Yes, exactly. And the reason I'm mentioning this is because that is the movie I think of whenever I hear the uh, song, whatever it takes by imagination dragons. Hmm. I'd have to listen to the song again to, well, to re-familiarize myself. The, Okay, so basically, there's this whole lot. There's this, the the um, the, what's it called? The chorus of the song basically goes whatever it takes, and the, and uh, the music becomes very droning. So it's almost like a command pop, if you will. Like, gotcha. they, like they're trying. They they're, they they have like this almost like psychedelic, but very demonic. But the binaural the binaural beats type of thing. Yeah. And, and they're saying, whatever it takes, do whatever it takes, basically. And I'm like, oh. I'm like, <laughs> uh, not today, Satan. <laughs> and I, I say this sarcastically and cynically. But, but they. Uh, it, 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 I think that. And, and, and it, it's frustrating for them, though, because the vast majority of them see this. They know this. They know that this kind of stuff is being pumped into their music. And they hate it. They want it to end. They want nothing more. They want nothing to do with it. And they want to be able to come out and say, hey, look, this is happening. I'm complicit and I'm sorry. What can I do to help? What can I do to fix it? Mm -hmm. That's, and um, the work we're doing now, all of us that are actually fighting against this, I think eventually, and I hope, so, I hope sooner rather than later, we'll be able to create that, like a punch a hole and chink the armor more than it is right now and we can have this outlet where you can actually deal with these people who 
are really just victims of circumstance. They didn't really want to do this, but they were forced to do this outside of their power, of their own power. And um, right, exactly. Imagine, I'm just thinking. Imagine if we actually get that. We have people who actually have influence, who are very regretful of their actions, and forgiveness is key. We we uh, there are people here right. who do these things. That they they don't mean to do these things, but they have no power in these things. And it's not that forgiveness is key. Remorse is remorse. key. Remorse. That's better. Because because forgiveness no 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 not not everybody deserves not everybody deserves forgiveness mm -hmm. only those who show remorse mm -hmm. deserve forgiveness. That's a better word. I, I I was thinking of that word, but I didn't come to head. But yeah, remorse. Because I because you know people have made mistakes. They want to make up for it. Okay, but make but sense. here's your chance. Right. Make amends. We're, we're here. Look, we have people here who have been through this who are saying, hey, look, we know what you've done. Just help us fix this, this and we can forgive you. It's, you have to go through your labors like Hercules, basically. Yeah. It's a, you prove it, basically. If you are remorseful, prove it. We will help you as long as you're able to put your side of the bargain. You know, we will give you right. everything you exactly. possibly need. We, we will give you instruments in order to do that, but you must be able to fill what you want to do and do it in a way that it is benevolent. Right. You need to show that you are going to put other people before yourself because you've put yourself ahead of everything for far too long. You need to back off and you need to show that you are done putting yourself first and you're going to put we the people before yourself. Well, it's in order, in order to make a more perfect union, I guess. Yeah. Well, exactly. That's, that's what we need. The sh the, you know, the we the people becomes true unity. True unity, not forced unity. And that's... No, and that's true the, unity. And, and, that, and that's the... I think that is the very... That's one of the big defining points is the idea of true unity versus this idea of forced unity. You know... Through, right. like, 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 for instance, through the U.S., through the EU, through state control, government control, that type of unity versus people compassionately working together for the betterment of society. Right. Exactly. Exactly. You know, it's that, you know, and that should be, I, I, won't, I want to think that would be kind of obvious, the self-preservation preservation of the group. You know... I think a lot of it has to do with greed. I think a lot of it has to do with money. Um, money corrupts. And me personally, I hate money. I hate it. I can't stand it. I think it's the, the, the end all be all of evil in, in existence. Um, money, money has no, no object. I don't, I, what, is it, what am I going to do with this? It, it, makes, it makes good people do terrible things. Mm -hmm. It, it, I don't know. Just the name itself just sounds dirty. I mean, it's it's frustrating. It's so frustrating to to know how many people, how many people. Well, I don't know. You can't know. Nobody knows how many people's lives have been sold. It's. I bet that number is astronomically high. Though. And the sick part is that, you know, in looking at some of this, you know, I'm seeing the, the, like the slave trade in Libya going on right now where there are people being sold for like $300 or something. And I'm sitting here and I'm like, there's so many people right now who can go out and buy like 500 people and free them or, or make sure that they don't have to live in these types of circumstances and help them, you know, rebuild their families and their lives rather than letting them, letting them sit in slavery why don't why don't more people do that? We do need but, abolitionists again. We de we definitely need that. Yeah. That, that we that's something I think we need more than more than anything at this point is that idea of an abolitionist who you know we abolish all these horrible just detestable things. And yeah. I don't know how in the world you would do that. No. Um, I... 
I, I, I know. It def- at this point, it defies kind of definition. Well, but... well, look, here's the thing. Our planet, we need a reset. We need a clean slate. The best thing that can happen to our planet right now at this point, and I'm not cutting, I'm not cutting, you know, anything, is if our ET friends come in and say, hey, guys, wake the fuck up. Let's go. <laughs> uh, I mean, because like, that is going to cause everybody to be like, oh, okay, okay, let's, 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 oh, let's start over. Hi, how are thing. you? <laughs> Yeah. Well, that's and- where everybody starts over like, hi, I'm so-and-so. It's nice to meet you. What do you do at that point? You start fresh. You start new. And you realize that your problems are, are so small and stupid in the big picture that, it, that things are much bigger on a much grander scale. And, uh-huh. and you, know, it, it, you know, but even then, before we even open up the fact that, that we have ETs, we need to deal with the human trafficking on this planet because it's not a far stretch until we go to human trafficking off the planet. Do you really got to talk about the Draco stuff? That's not fun. That's I... a... <laughs> see, see, you, you know exactly what I'm talking about when I say that. <laughs> well, it's not, it's, it's, it's not just the Dracos. Uh, it's... I, I know. I, and that's the, that's the one, this is an example. There, there, are, there are many, 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 other things out there that are doing it's, these things. Yeah, and and on the bright just, side, well, on the bright side, it seems like most people realize it's the individual. It's not the race or the religion or the species or the... Or the ideology or... Right. Or the, or, or, or the background or, you know, it's the individual. Right. There's, there's actually right. individualism and, heck, free will. We can actually do something about it. I, and it's starting to seem like people are really waking up to that and are really starting to understand that because, you know, I'm seeing a lot less. And maybe, maybe I'm sheltered, maybe I'm, I'm, you know, biased, but I'm seeing a lot less <clears throat> generalized hatred for generic groups and more specific targeting at individuals. And it's, it's a great thing to see that because we, we. that we can to mitigate that because when we feel that people when people feel that they are going to be unnecessarily targeted and unnecessarily hit at they're not going to want to come forward mm. and we and we really True. need to encourage people to come forward mm-hmm. so if anybody wants there to come forward feel free this is an open open, this is an open uh, forum for anybody who wants to talk we want to talk here or you, you're also more than welcome to contact the doj there's currently um from what I understand, there's been a task force that's been established to go over um, a lot of these CPS cases and all this kind of stuff for, for families that have had their children trafficked through CPS. Was so a, if, uh, you know, oh, what's up? I was, I was asking, was that, was that under the toilet of Whitaker? I'm not exactly sure who established it, but um, I found out about it recently. So there's a whole task force that's been established to help put these families back together. But he's a, uh, but I, I, the work I, but I want to give the gentleman a little props. I think he's been wonderful as AAG. Yes, Whitaker. Uh, Whitaker, and uh, I mean, heck, Whitaker would have probably not been able to get as much done if it wasn't for Sessions. You know, I, I don't know much about exactly what Sessions has been doing, but I think the fact that there's been nothing coming from, that there was nothing that came from Sessions, I think that spoke volumes. Mm-hmm. Um, Whitaker, I um, have my own thoughts on him, my own questions I have for him. Um, but he's done, from what I've seen, it looks like he's done a fantastic job. Um, I'm very curious about William Barr, I believe. Here's my thoughts on Barr. Barr was the AG during HW. Mm-hmm. We all know the uh, horrid past of HW. So did Barr do the things Barr did because of that background, that, 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 that presence? 
how is it going to be different well, this way? We know when we have a total paradigm shift of that power structure now. And the fact that he's connected to Mueller. Right. How is that going to work? And, and he would be Mueller's boss if he would be confirmed today. Well, the interesting thing about that is, from what, I end, from what I've seen, is that, pretty, and then I don't want to say all and assume that it's all, but the vast majority of them are complicit in one degree or another. They all have these ties in one degree or another. The question becomes whether they, as individuals, want to disclose this stuff or not. Whitaker is very, very, very big on transparency. I can't imagine Trump putting somebody in who is not big on transparency after having somebody like Whitaker in. I, I can't. What, is, what was his name? Um, who took over? Who's, to def- who's currently acting defense? Uh, to, who currently deals with defense at the uh, Mad Club? Gosh, I want to say, I think I have his name wrong or I'm pronouncing it wrong, but I want to say Shanahan. Shanahan, that's it. And uh, I think he's, when we come to over transparency, I think he's amazing for that aspect, especially with Space Command, because he dealt with the, uh, um, the corporate contracts. Right, right. So we, if we wanted to deal with the SSP stuff, he's our man. That's interesting. I didn't know that. He dealt with, uh, was it, was he Boeing? I think it was either Boeing or McDonnell Douglas or something Something like that. I definitely know that he, he he was a high executive up there, right? That means he would have some form of knowledge one way or another. If not all knowledge, he would have some form of probable, uh, some form of deniability within it. With some idea of something going on there that he was not knowledgeable of. Right. Still, you know, that idea of plausible deniability. But you also have to remember that, I believe, I'm not 100% sure, but I believe POTUS has um, really a lot of measures to decide who gets access to what material. Exactly. So POTUS can, de- can declassify whatever, whatever he wants to whomever he wants, whenever he wants. So, that, 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 yeah. That, in that aspect, you know, everyone's like, where are the big things? Why, why is there nothing happening? Because they're waiting for the best time to do it. It's mm-hmm. all a chess game at this point. Art of war. We won't want to do it when, there's not, when there isn't an opportune time to do it to create the most maximum effect of it. Why has Spice not come out? Well, because it's been a mess in the Justice Department. It's been a mess in the public sphere. To drop it right then and there would have been catastrophic because it would be just dusted away. Well, and also I think that something needed to happen to show the people the implications of FISA and what, and what FISA can do and to what degree. And, um, you know, I have my own speculations about FISA. You know, I can't prove this specifically. I can just go based on observations uh, as somebody who I, I like to believe I'm, I'm a fairly observant person. Um, I do believe, based on minimal evidence, that CPS has been exploiting FISA to target families. That sounds very impossible, especially when you uh, deal with the power structure. The power structure. Um, looking at this from a very, much more, very macro scale of things, if we're going to pull the camera back all the way, and you realize who is in power you know, for the last 20 years prior. Right. Would this be possible? Yes. How likely? Very likely. You know, that whole idea of be careful of, like, remember the whole idea with Snowden and how he exposed the NSA? Right. Now imagine, we, we, know, we just learned about that. Imagine how far that goes with that power structure currently in place. It's not just that one thing. It's going to be infinitesimally many, not, uh, exponentially many. So right. would it be possible for CPS to use FISA? Of course. Would they be I mean I mean we're, we're certainly finding out that FISA court was a rubber stamp court. You know, the judges would get a warrant put in front of them and they would just stamp it. Mhm. Yeah, exactly. So I would think, well, from what I've been reading or uh, and watching, several commentators have been saying that the most likely time to do it would be when they would have when T Mueller is going to be going to court. Not Mueller but himself, team, but 
Team, but Team Mueller. But Team Mueller is trying to postpone it as long as possible. Team Mueller is going to continue to postpone it as long as mm-hmm. possible. Exactly. They don't. They don't want this out because there's nothing there. At least in one right. So, th- go ahead. No, they want to postpone it because you know they have nothing. They literally have nothing. The things that they would have would be so minor that it wouldn't even be worth looking at. Well, and the thing is, is what they have pales a comparison to what we the people have, mm-hmm. to what the Q team has. You know, Not what even. they have is they have the exact same thing that everybody else has. If the Mueller team does have access to the NSA server in Utah, which I doubt, but if they do, Huber has access to that as well. Whitaker has access to that as well. Barr will have access to that as well. So whatever... Um, so whatever um, Mueller can come up with, whatever Mueller can use, doesn't matter because Whitaker and, um, and the Q team and everybody else has the exact same thing, if not thousands of times more. We, I, I think we also have to add the Anons as well. The, well, Anons, have cool. been, the Anons have been amazing in this aspect. Well, I'm, I'm not assuming the Anons have access to the NSA server. No, but I'm just, I'm just but saying But the Anons they're, have, they're they have, ooh, oh yeah. You know, when when we, I say we the people and when I say Q team, I lump the Anons in with the Q team. As far as I, I'm concerned, Q the Anons team. are the Q team. Anons, Q teams, truth theories. I think it's funny because we're eventually nowadays we're hitting that uh, what was I called that that not quantum shit what was I called that singularity of if you will, where everything now is eventually just it's, it's, it was at one time it was humongous like this big. All of a sudden, it's slowly getting. It's it's we're getting to that bottleneck where everything's you know it, coming out. And you know, it, there is just so much pressure. How much until that that bottle, if you will, either the cork pops or the entire bottle shatters? Yeah. But, but, I would say not very much at all. I mean, no. It, it, everything in this entire uh, existence that we have is collapsing. I mean, if it's not the, political, then it's cultural, then it's financial. Everything the, is yeah. collapsing. Well, and that's the thing, is because this entire ordeal was so systemic that taking out just one little piece of it, especially a core aspect of their funding like human trafficking, there's nothing they can do to recover from that at this point. The human trafficking is the biggest thing that they have had working for them for years, for decades. And with that being gone, with their primary funding being taken away, that's it. There's nothing they can do. And with, and with the addition of two, um, what's it called? Two EOs, it, it just distorts them even more. Oh, yeah. The, uh, the block, one blocking the property of persons involved in uh, corruption and human rights abuses. Yes. And the other one, I believe, was going after human traffickers. Upside down. Yep. There you go. Sorry. No problem. Yeah, they have the one with human traffickers, the one with human rights abuses. Actually, there's a third one when it talks about interfering with elections. Oh, yeah. So, if they... Oh, I that's mean, another thing that we need to find out. We need to find out how that election integrity investigation went. We still haven't well, the, found the, that the out yet either. The report has come out, but it hasn't became it hasn't public. I, I I I'm trying to keep as optimistic about this as possible. Hopefully, they're just like waiting for the proper moment because a lot of things. But you know, it's taxing on people. Well, and I mean, another thing. Somebody used a term earlier. I saw it today, where they were talking about carpet bombing. Yeah. Which also makes sense because they're doing a bunch of little stuff constantly, like it's it's like machine it, it, gun fire. It's smaller and it, it, it's small and it builds up and up and up. I think the no- next major one, uh, if I had to be a betting man, would probably be RBG. That'd be probably the next big one. That's probably going to be a distraction, and, and they probably yeah, they'll probably carry that out. Um, and then you have another judge. And then, yeah. and there, uh, that's funny because then you could use that because now you have the public paying attention to that, just like they did with Kavanaugh. Uh, and everybody's and, focused on the Supreme Court. Well, 
remember when I remember the conversation between uh, then judge, now justice, Kavanaugh and Lindsey Graham? How they were yes. talking about how this, how the uh, tribunals work. Yes. And and martial law. That, is that, that's kind of like an idea of at least partial disclosure about how things work. Right. Um, would it be possible that they did this during a separate confirmation hearing? It's possible. You know, they can carpet bomb that way. I mean, you have, uh, and it's going to be in the Senate, which is a good place for it. Which they have a they have a larger majority now than they had back then. So I mean, I, I they, believe this is. I believe this is one of the largest majorities in in recent history. Within the last hundred years. Yeah. It's, it's the first time. It's the first time in quite some time where he actually gained members in the Senate in his, in his first term. Yeah. That just tells you. Uh, it's another part. That's another feature of the magic wand. <laughs> yes, the magic wand. You know. It might, <clears throat> but that's. Be, but that's also what's the most frustrating thing about all of this is at this point, we, you know, we know. I, and I, well, and that's the thing is, is I might be biased, but at this point, enough people know what's going on that POTUS can use that magic wand to say, all right, guys, enough is enough. Watch. Well, if you wanted to be sassy, you'd be like, hey, watch this up and then down. <laughs> See, see, magic. Look, look, it, look at that. Wow, I wonder what happened. Oh, you know, that would be great if um, there was a nice, heavily chemtrail day. POTUS comes up on the podium, starts giving a speech. Huh? Hey, guys, what's up? What's up? Hey, guys, check out what's going on over there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm thinking, I'm thinking the fine, I'm thinking, I'm thinking the stock market. Notice how the market jumps 600 points and then drops 600 points. He's like, imagine he'd be like, look at that Wall Street right there. Watch what happens when I make two phone calls. Well, and, and you know, he can play it so many ways, too. He could. He could. Because, <sighs> like, it, he, he has, like, so many options. It's amazing. I'm kind of jealous. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I'm kind of jealous. I, he can play this so yeah. many ways. Is it the, now, the problem, the, right now, the problem we have now is that there are so many options. It's not that there are few options, it's that there are so many. And what is the least, uh, what will cause the least ca uh, the catastrophic collateral damage? Uh, all right, the one that would cause the least catastrophic damage? I think the president, vice president, um, Whitaker, Kristen Nielsen, um, should go out on stage to hold a press conference um, say, all right, guys, you know, you guys have pretty much figured out the way things are going, so we want to disclose something big for you. Um, and have somebody come out who is a representative from other worldly nations and say, hey, look, we've been here for a while. We have, you know, already a degree of diplomacy going on. We are here now currently publicly disclosing it to you, the people, because you deserve to know. You have the right to know. And you already know. Let's just make it official. But it's like, a, <laughs> like it's almost like a, a date. It's almost like when you date somebody and you're like, let's make this official. It's no longer. It's yeah. tough, tough <laughs> all this thing. Let's actually let's, let's actually make this official. Let's put a ring on it. <laughs> well, you know, actually, like like the, when people are too, too, trying to date. Now we're officially, you know, together, type of thing. Right. You know, we have we have asserted our dominance on this thing, or we have asserted <laughs> our control over this thing. That was there. That was very. That was very aggressive of me for some reason. Anyways, uh, <laughs> it's okay. I'm sorry. My toxic masculinity is showing. <laughs> oh God! Don't don't even. <laughs> I, oh my gosh! I'm uh, the culture. <laughs> Hold on, let me let me let them out. Okay. I'll be back. Okay. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> Hope you guys are enjoying this. Um, I had a, it was a pretty dark topic. I thought we put a little bit of a lightness to it. Uh, it helped digest this a little bit. Was there any uh, thing you guys want to talk about while there's a little bit of break? <laughs> Apparently, Diamond is just like me and enjoys playing outside in the snow. 
Oh, it's snowing outside? Yeah. <laughs> uh, it, it's, I was supposed to get a dusting over here. We've got like half an inch on the ground. It's barely anything, but yay. <laughs> you notice it's in that area, though. Mm -hmm. It's in the D.C. area. Yep. I wonder why. <laughs> I'm yeah. sorry. I'm just. I'm a truther at this point, and I always say that there's always a coincidence. I wonder why it's totally in that area. I wonder what's happening. The, the coincidence it is a convenient is... distraction. Oh yeah. Well, the coincidence have gotten so bad that. How on many a whim. do you need until they're mathematically impossible? I, I, but you know, of course, there are times that you're going to be looking into it too much. You know yeah. that does happen. Like yeah. earlier. Oh man, earlier I went outside with. Uh, with the, the, the dogs outside just to kind of enjoy the snow and watching the flurries and all that kind of stuff. And then um, I'm looking around and look at the yard, looking at the way the light is casting on my yard. And there's a giant queue in the backyard. <laughs> so I, I come inside like, nope, 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 too much. Nope, nope, <laughs> nope. Was, and, was Galactic so, playing with you again? Yeah, I'm just like, nope, no more, I'm done. The, not not to mention the queue on the uh, the seventeen on the docket. Oh, I know. Or the fact that the CPS case itself has a seventeen on it as well. That's what I was, that's what I was mentioning. That's what I, oh, I, they're they're both the, no, they're the federal case has a seventeen, and the case CPS itself has a seventeen as well. And it's sealed. One of these things are sealed. Yes. Does yes. That make, does that make it a sealed indictment or? I'm not sure. Um, but it's, it's definitely it's definitely a sealed federal uh, case file. It's a sealed federal case file against the state of Maryland, naming multiple judges in the state of Maryland. So it basically sounds like a corruption case. I I mean I'm asking for arrests in it. I'm asking for that, for. Would that go under? That might go after Rico. It might that might we actually might be able to use Rico on this? Oh boy, yes. we can start dealing with racketeering. That's that's fun. We can finally deal with Rico. I'm the, so the excited. I people we could possibly use on that is ridiculous. That that's the that's the wonderful part, you know. And it's not just it's not just the small people at this point. We know we got some higher level people. We no, know. that goes up. I know that goes up. The I'm so, no, and that's can, the thing that I'm so excited about that, because as soon as this subpoena gets granted and we can start opening up these cases and really figuring out where this is going. This breaks through to the top. You know what? I would argue this might even even go way up to the Pacers. And it that's might. A, that's and that's a name most people don't like talking about. You know, they stop at I Rock. Don't, so they, uh, I don't know much about them, but uh, but I know that they stop are at Soros or Rock or Rothschild and stuff like that. Okay, you know, we we think they're the, the big bads. Pacers From what I understand, above, they're above them. Pacers are yeah. above them, and then Pacers deal with. Of beyond, but uh, mm. yeah, Pacers, uh, and I'm going to give some reference to people who watch this later on. Uh, for people who do not know, the Pacers are a massive hidden family that can follow. They can basically follow the lineage all the way to the royalty of France during the time of the French Revolution. They basically smuggled uh, the French royalty during the French Revolution to America so that they could protect their lineage during the time of Napoleon and Robespierre. So they are still around to this day. They're the true, they're the bourbons. These are bourbons. Really? So everyone thinks that the, thinks the bourbon family is gone, you know, after, after uh, Louis and Antoinette. No, Pacers. They're French. They're, they're, they're French royalty, blue bloods. And that's interesting that uh, that we have the yellow vest that really propped up in France first. Imagine um, we get rid of the top one. We're working in a very way. Of, we're t working in a pincer maneuver right now. We're doing art war in chess. We deal with things up top. And this sounds very uh, satanic when you say this. So above as below. Uh, but we're going to use their but tactics against them. You know, well, and that's exactly what it is. Below, we're going to attack them above and below. And let's see how they feel when they are out, outnumbered and outgunned and outmanned and out strategized. 
you know. And it's it's great to see their own strategies being used against them. And then, yeah, and because imagine how much more pressure it puts on people like the Rothschilds, like Soros, like uh, the Rockefellers, uh, mm -hmm. like the British royalty. Um, it, it, it puts so much more strain on them because now they can't go up to help with extra resources because that's being cut off. They can't go to their service and then they can't... that resource is being cut off. And so they're like, God, I would have nowhere to move. I am literally checkmate. And, and, and that's the thing, too, that we're going to have to be able to count on is we're going to have to be able to count on the servants to tell us because the servants are going to know more than anybody who is actually good and who wasn't. Mm -hmm. And that's why because, I, that's, sorry, because the way some sorry the way that somebody treats their servants or the help speaks volumes about them as a person. And that also explains the record number of whistleblowers we're dealing nowadays. Mm -hmm. We're seeing them, we're seeing them all over the place, politically, yeah. economically, culturally, and culturally I mean like uh, we're talking Hollywood, music, movies, well movies Hollywood, but uh, fashion. Fashion is a big one. When you when you start going into like trafficking and stuff like that, fashion is a big one. Really? Yeah, because I'm talking like the models. Oh yes. Models, and then you go into. Uh... And this one, I'm, 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 I'm like. We well, I mean, the, we're they're going to the pornography industry. That's another big one. Oh, that. Oof. Yeah, that. that's that, that's why I was really hesitant because that opened a whole can of worms. Yeah. By the way, nickname can of worms right here. I will be opening them really <laughs> gladly. I don't. I don't. I'm not afraid of can of worms. I don't, I'm not afraid of things blowing into my face because <laughs> I've done it so many times at this point. I've been desensitized. Well, well, I mean that's the thing is, is I'll tell you if if I'm not in a place to be able to talking about something. So. Well, you know that's why. I, I'm, I just noticed the reaction. And I'm like, okay, we got to back up. <laughs> uh, we're backtracking, but yeah, still. No, I actually. Well, something I did want to bring up um, that I have been remembering in regards to um, the pornography thing is that when I was a child, I went to um, one of the the Playboy houses, okay, um, something like that, and I remember being in one of the yard the, the yard, sitting on a bench at the house, and there were two of the two of the girls there. And they had been there uh, quite a while. They had been there since before adulthood. And they were really smart. Like, it was, it was, it was really amazing because we were talking and they knew full well what was going on. They were very, very intelligent, very well-spoken. Um, and I, I found out back then that apparently even back then, um, Hugh Hefner had a reputation for saving girls from bad situations and um, trying to help them and take care of them. And apparently he recorded a lot of stuff to keep for his own records to be able to use, to be able to disclose um, information as a, it, it, when he got the chance. Would it be, would it, is it, and this is a theory of mine, could he have possibly known too much and they got rid of him? That, that, you know, is very much a plausible theory. I'm going to live in the land of he's in witness protection. I have no proof on that, but that, okay, that but is the I, land I'm going to put myself in. Are, I, 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 nowadays, when it comes to all these people just mysteriously disappearing or having incidents happening, I tend to go to the idea we have a lot of white hats and patriots out there who are willing to help. And I would, I would even go as far as that's why we've made so much progress in a lot of places is because these people actively know about what's happening and they're putting them in a safe place. Right. Like, like I would not be surprised, like, um, the rich family have some connection to this, especially with all that happened or Assange or, you know, there are other names that really kind of mind, but those are the two that really just kind of, like, pop in my head because look at all the dirt we have on all these people. Yeah, no, it, it, it's, it pales in comparison to what they have against them. And uh, the amount of progress we've been able to use with said items is massive. Yeah. So, what, what, is that possible? Yes. Likely? Absolutely. At this point, and, you know, Scott and I have been talking recently, and, and we've been sitting here saying, you know, the realm of, of possibility has expanded. 
been I've been sitting here saying, you know, the, these coincidences are these coincidences really possible? Like this this can't be happening. But then we're sitting here like it's it's becoming exponentially more and more possible. This this reminds me of a uh, quantum entanglement. I'm fairly familiar with that. You know how you can, like, okay, for people who are not familiar with quantum entanglement, quantum entanglement is when you actually quantumly link two particles of two separate items together. Let's say you have two basketballs or two baseballs or something like that, and you bounce them on the ground. They will bounce at the same time because they are quantumly locked. Now, imagine if I threw one basketball or baseball, whatever you want to call it, threw it to the other side of the, of the galaxy, right? If I drop the other one, it would still bounce in perfect sync because they are locked. It is so like, and that's where I, that's where the idea of the coincidence is like, these are happening so perfectly. Literally, you couldn't, you couldn't even time these things that well. No. Um, it would take a lot of forethought. It would take some type of um, ESP or time travel or something like that. Well, you know, they would <laughs> think it don't exist, but... Time travel. Oh God. Um, I could I could start talking about Tesla and how that was next. See, that's that's so interesting. We could we branched into like I don't know twenty twenty five topics because that's how that's how well connected these things are now. Yeah. It, 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 it's we are. I would say that we're in a renaissance in, in some way. We're beginning in a renaissance. We're starting a renaissance right now. We're in the beginning. We're ending of a dark age in the beginning of a renaissance. Yep. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very soon. Um, well, what is it? What is the um, the twelve thousand year galactic cycle? You know, from the Aquarius. the gold ages to the bronze or silver bronze dark back up. We're on the way back up. Yeah, age of Aquarius. Um, they say uh, historians say that every one hundred years or so, a major shift in society happens. Uh. What happened in the last hundred years? Well, the power struggle. You have the, you have the Fed. You have the you have the powerful elite that started their control about maybe ten years, twenty years prior. Then they asserted their control, and here we are. What happened afterwards? Well, we're in that end of that one period, and we're going into a new period. You know, it, 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 it world, the universe, and everything works in cycles. Nothing is exactly random. That some things are random, but you can still predict them in some way. Well, as you mentioned before, above, as above, so below. There is a pattern. There is order. You know, where there's light, there's darkness. And where there's darkness, there's light. There's always going to be balance and pattern and cycles and all that kind of stuff. Where it's, it's, we're all connected. Mm -hmm. and, eventually, and, you know, according to the law of oneness, everything eventually runs into a moot point. There's always balance. You know? There's always going to be equal amounts of darkness and light. One might shine brighter or might be darker than the other, but that's all on uh, that's all on perspective, not on actual objectiveness. Who was it that they say that um, the brightest light casts the darkest shadow? Exactly. And uh, well, darkest you know the darkest shadow and the brightest light. We're seeing that darkest shadow right now. Which means the brightest light is somewhere out there. We just have to, uh, if not look out there physically, internally, higher selves thing. You know, now we're jumping to spirituality, the stars. Yes, to the stars. Yeah. Because I hate to say that, I, 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 I hate to keep on bouncing around it. We're not alone. We're, we're, it's no. obvious that we're not alone. No. I mean, that, the, even scientists have said there are so many stars out there. Are we so lucky as to be the only things out here? I no. think no. There no, are trillions and trillions not. and trillions of stars and systems and galaxies and moons and dimen <sighs> dimensions. There's a different reality for everything I do. There's a, there's a possibility I did one thing or the other. No, I snapped my finger. There's a universe where I didn't. No. The possibilities are literally limitless. But going back to topic <laughs> is that these things are being shown. These 
things are here. They are literally being handed to you. Don't be squeamish because it's going to get a lot worse. <laughs> it's going to get a lot, it's going to get a lot worse before it gets better. Well, I, the, and my frustration with that is at what point is it going to start getting better? Because yeah, we've been I hearing that it, because we've been hearing that it gets worse, it gets worse, it gets worse. Oh, I'm well aware of how, how worse it gets. At what point does it start getting better? Exactly. Exactly. How much worse? I don't know. But you know what's funny is that I've noticed that when it comes to that, we get to a point where we get some new stuff, and it stays there until we get desensitized to it. And then they bring in new stuff. And yeah. We get and then, you know, that process repeats until we finally get to a point where it's like, okay, that's it. Wait, 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 wait that's it? Well, the, the question becomes, are we going to allow ourselves to continue to be desensitized? That's the bigger question. Because the reason why we got to this position in the first place is because they desensitized us. Well, I would say that there may be a little bit of, a little bit of desensitization might be necessary just to help cope a little bit. But, you know, just that amount. You know, not wholly. You know, there, there is, like, there's a time and a place for everything. It, it, Speaking of, let me let, let me let them back in. Sorry. Hold on. Um, um. Uh. Come on. Go lay down. Go lay down. Hey, Trevor. Hope you guys are enjoying. Another I'm sorry about that. Yeah. No problem. Hey, we're all genuine people here. We have... We don't have any special thing. And, and, you know, the equivalency of a child. It's a fur baby. I have a cat. I totally understand. <laughs> Except the, the cat goes, you, serve it. You serve me. Clean litter. Feed me. Pet me. <laughs> Go. I'm like, okay. Roll is empty. LOL, JK. LOL. LOL, Ruffle. Yeah. <laughs> ruffle now. It's like, oh, no, I need food. Look at, look at food. Uh, haha! I made you look. <laughs> I made you look. <laughs> I've had that happen. The cat was saying, I'm hungry. I want food, and I'm going there. I'm like, your bowl was full. What do you want? <laughs> oh, I just wanted to tease you, and then he just scurries away. It's like, I'm like, okay. <laughs> See, this is what I meant by uh, putting some lightness to a lot of these darker topics. Yeah, I mean, it, you need to. You have to. Like, I would say that's probably one of my uh, talents or gifts or whatever you want to call it. It's just to try to make people happy, laugh. You know, yes, things get bad. People, things are horrible. But that doesn't mean you can't laugh about it. And, and that doesn't mean that we can't try to, you know, find ways to make it easier for, for each other. A spoonful of sugar goes and gets the medicine down. That's true. That's true. Kill them with kindness. Love and light. Yeah. All right. I think we've hit a nice place to uh, wrap things up. So any last minute things you want to speak of or talk about? Um, no, not that I can think of. Really, just the main thing is um, if you know something, say something. We're listening. You know, we want to help. If you help us, we will help you. Because I know that the vast majority of you want nothing to do, that, do with this. I know that the vast majority of you want to disclose this and want this to be made public so that way it stops. We, the people, are listening. We are here for you and we want to help. But you need to come forward because only then can we start healing. You're, you and us. And um, last thought in my mind is once you stop hiding these things, you can actually deal with the grieving. You can actually deal with the healing. Right. Um, it's, just, it's just like something I'm doing right now, which is uh, I regularly drink. So I'm actually finally because I was normally. Congratulations. Good. I was right really now, worried I was, about you. 
Because I was using it because I was masking a lot of uh, like depression and other mental illness uh, ailments because of the sad uh, awakening and conversion of things like that. Because, yeah, I was pretty bad at one point. And, you know, that was just my way of just, you know, dousing. Of coping. Playing, coping. And it's like, no, we can't do that anymore. We have to actually, you know, face it head on with a straight face. Hi, fur baby. Um, and uh, you gotta, you gotta press on. You know, it's only going to get as bad as you make it. But actually, that will probably amplify it, make it worse if it's bad. But that's really it. That's all I gotta say about that. I think uh, 2019 can become the year of the clean conscience. Well, the way I'm seeing it and the way the systems are working right now, we're seeing systemic collapse. And that is not necessarily a bad thing. That just means the power structure that we've had that will abuse, that will uh, exploit, that has basically controlled people is disappearing and we can have this fresh new reset yes we fucked up and i don't view that lightly we can use that you know reset button that whole thing like yeah fresh page okay what did we do what caused this as long as we learn from it we need to learn from it to really make sure that uh that we fix it loss and failure are the two greatest teachers yes Yes, you're right. But uh, imagine all the great people out there who have done major things because of that. Yes. So. And, and like, like, I, like I keep reminding myself and like everybody I believe should also remind themselves, is that which doesn't kill you makes you stronger. The, the fires of life forges you into a stronger steel. Well, well, may everyone's path be filled with light, love, support, family and prosperity so and guys, may we and may we all go forward in true unity so that's going to be all for tonight thank you so much for joining me thank you jennifer for joining me and thank you for I'll inviting me alex not a problem you guys have a wonderful night have a good night bye take care